How's it going guys? Welcome to the FM Dugout and we're back with Sterling Albion and the British Steel Challenge as our first season comes to a close. We have three games left and we have a lead of six points. So, assuming we can actually do better than Clyde today, uh, we will win the title. Um, but we're away from home against my bogey team, Elgin City. Um, as you can see, they're sitting seventh in the league. So today, really, we should be beating them, but they always seem to give me a lot of trouble, as I've alluded to in previous episodes. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes today. Um, I will just be thankful to kind of get this season over and done with. Um, as the ticker goes through the recent results, you'll see that things have kind of taken a bit of a nosedive. Players just have not been playing as well. Um, just seems to generally be a kind of downward spiral of the team. Certainly, I think the squad harmony's got something to do with that. Um, the way I handled certain kind of key players not being happy, being left out of the team, and then people supporting them and so on. So that's certainly not gone in my favour. Um, but a couple of things to kind of go over. Uh, first of all, we've got a signing coming in in the summer. It's the first one that we've arranged so far. And for some reason, my scout report has been lost for him, so you can't really actually see a great deal about him. Uh, Scott Ferguson was at Clyde. Um, I actually tried to sign him in the January window, um, but they wanted uh, 10k, I think it was, and we couldn't afford that. Um, for some reason, he wasn't opted to be played this year. Um, been pretty decent in previous versions of Football Manager, from what I remember, um, and certainly the scout report seemed to be quite good for him. So, taking a punt now that he was actually released on a free transfer, uh, mutual consent. Um, so might as well kind of give it a go um, and I think it's on a, a page you play basis for him um, certainly some of the other targets I've, I've looked at signing uh, are looking for wages and they're looking for quite big wages and at the moment our wage budget uh, we are currently £500 a week under it but uh, for some reason the board don't really want to let us kind of break um, the, the kind of structure we have at the moment so I can't really go for I think it's 150 a week which isn't ideal, um, given the fact that a lot of our players will be out of contract soon and I'm not renewing them. We'll have a, a busy summer uh, ahead of us. Uh, that's assuming I stay, but I have signed a new deal, so we'll see how that one pans out. We've also had the youth players come through as well. Um, and let's just take a look at two of, two of the prospects here who look to be pretty decent. So we've got James Lametti, who's already played... Uh, <clears throat> two times and two sub appearances he's got himself a goal he got himself a man of the match 81% uh, pass completion is pretty high you can see for a, a player who um, effectively just come through our youth system 16 years old really good skills and so far he's already had um, good improvement I think in, in some of the kind of key areas potential ability 4 stars so I think the guy is probably going to outgrow the club in a couple of years, but um, happy to give him a go at the moment. He will be playing today. Um, Sean Dixon has had 25 yellow cards this year, um, and he's got sent off twice, I think, so far. Had a big ban because he went over so many yellows. Um, so, yeah, we'll see Lametti probably start today. Uh, where is my other guy? Let's sort it by name Craig Adams there he is so this is the other guy who's come through uh, attacking midfielder um, and again quite impressive in terms of the stats natural fitness 16 uh, fairly pacey agile technique's not too bad um, again for a 16 year old I think it's pretty good flares 12 um, so I think he's he's played a couple of times two games uh, 6.55 not had the same kind of impact as Lametti but um, it's early days yet so Anyway, um, yeah, if we have a look at the fixtures, I know the ticker's kind of gone through it, but one of the things I realised was we haven't actually won an away match since Christmas Eve against Montrose. Um, fair number of draws, but quite a few losses as well. Um, and as you can see, we went through a really bad patch not that long ago with four uh, games without a win. Um, generally just seemed to be better at home for one reason or another so obviously today that makes things a little bit more interesting for us and um, yeah let's take a look now at uh, today's lineup that we're going with 
So I've opted to change the formation here uh, to try and counter the 4-3-3. Um, I suspect they will play that. They play 4-1-4-1, I think, away from home, 4-3-3, um, when you play them at their ground. So I've kind of opted to go with this formation with Hodge and Miller as ball-winning midfielders. Lamethi as a supporting central mid. Poacher and an advanced forward up front and wing backs who I'm telling to get as far forward as possible with deep crosses into the centre. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not this will actually work in my favour. Um, <clears throat> in terms of some of the kind of role suitability, you can see Verlac and Petrie not that comfortable at fullback. Um, but I think it's it's worth a punt. Um, Verlac's had something like eight assists, I think, this year. Um, so getting the ball out to him, getting him to get crosses in from deep or from the byline or whatever, should actually be pretty useful for us. So let's get on into the game um, and see whether or not we can uh, win the title today. Uh, I don't honestly believe we will. I, I've got a funny feeling we're just going to extend the away um, <clears throat> winless streak, really. Uh, Yes, the tactic change is on. Yep. Right, okay. So they are playing 4-3-3, but they're playing with one defensive midfielder. So hopefully the two the, the two formations will cancel themselves in terms of the forwards. Same number there. Um, our wing backs will give us our width where they've got nothing in midfield. So the three again will we'll kind of go with there. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, in terms of our team talk we lost last time so we can use revenge as our motivation and i think we'll tell the goalkeeper the goalkeeper's back now um it doesn't seem as good as he was before he was injured so um i don't know whether he'll keep a clean sheet today as i say elgin are one of those teams i can't stand they always beat me always score and one of the things I have certainly noticed with our play of late is the fact that we just we're not creating a great deal uh, number of chances. Some of the games we've actually um, had, I think there was one I had no shots on target, six shots, and I think five were off target. One was blocked. If you get a chance here, Hodge edge of the box, left foot to drive, smashes it home into the bottom corner. Well, wasn't expecting that. It was a great start for us. The first twenty minutes away from home. Skelly laying it off to Hodge, a couple of touches to set himself up, actually it was nowhere near the bottom corner was it, it was quite central, uh, I guess the height was the thing that kind of beat the goalkeeper because it was along the ground, um, either that or the goalkeeper's just rubbish, and Gunn, what did I tell you, I said it before, Craig Gunn always seems to score against us, so Elgin hit back straight away, a little bit of fortune there, I think the ball kind of had the pinball effect with Sutherland there in the box, Stewart plays in yeah there was a bit of a, a lucky break for them Gun with a simple finish and they're back in the game disappointing you get yourself ahead away from home it's something you really want to kind of hold on to but we don't look too out of our depth, pass completions a little bit lower than usual Um. To be honest, if, if I got a draw out of this game, I wouldn't be too disappointed. Really not a lot happening. There really isn't a lot. And a thrown out Elgin in their own half. Launched forward by Moore. Sutherland picks it up, looks forward for Gunn. Gunn manages to get it through to Riley and he's straight through and goal. Right on the stroke of half time, 2 1 Elgin just cut open again. So we've had three highlights and three goals now. Uh, every shot on target has gone in the back of the net. As we look again here, you can see Smith just lost his man. Keeper comes out, but not very committal um, in terms of, of trying to win the ball from Riley. And he just slots it into the empty net there in the end. Well,. After going 1 0 up, that is rather poor. Um, Kieran Miller's not playing particularly well. We're not. The trouble is, we've not got too many options. We keep losing our, our defenders to be. Uh, sorry, our central midfielders to suspension. Um, 
I don't know, Duke's really not playing very well. The, the two up front just doesn't seem to be working that well for us. I might bring him off. Possibly put Gibson in there and try and get something in. The only trouble is it's just going to play against their defensive midfielder really and probably cancel him out. Hodge on the ball. I don't think he's going to score from here somehow. Uh, Lametti, the youngster, 16-year-old to Duke, and he's just lost it. Hold-up play is really poor. Gunn looking for Sutherland. Luckily, we cut them out. Um, yeah, Duke really has struggled. He had a superb start to the season. Then, of course, he picked up that injury. I think it um, ruled him out of that game against Linfield. And since he's come back, he just hasn't really seemed to have uh, got any form. Lametti crossing deep. Miller, Hodge, can he get a second? He can. What a finish. Absolutely fantastic finish there. I'm not going to say it went in the top corner until I see the replay because I'll probably just make a fool of myself. And it went more central. Lametti with the cross. Uh, Duff with the clearance. Miller just laying it off to Hodge. Again, one touch, left foot. Yeah, it was pretty close to the top corner. Nice finish from him. Two in one game for him. And uh, game on again. I still do think we're going to have to change something with Aaron Duke. Um, just doesn't look as though he's, he's going to do in here. Lametti seems to be struggling a little bit in midfield. Um, he picks the ball up, plays it forward looking for Duke. Not the greatest ball through, so it's probably going to be Elgin's chance here based on the fact that the keeper is going to launch it up. And nobody's challenging Sutherland there. That, for me, is disappointing. Uh, I have got tight marking on for all the forward players. Gun, great save from Smith. That surely should have been Gunn's second of the game. And now we've got a def uh, defender corner here. Moore whips it straight in. Sutherland unchallenged and he's glanced it wide of the far post. Again, another really good opportunity for Elgin. I'm just trying to hold off a little bit, but the game's starting to open up a little bit now. And ping pong again. Riley off the... Jeez. Off the junction of the, the goalpost there. Right, we're going to have to go and change something because this... I really don't think it's working for us at the moment. Lametti, 6.5. Just wondering whether I should maybe try Gibson there, but I, I like the fact that the three kind of midfielders... Just giving us something, uh, you know, a little bit of stability in the middle of the park. Uh, most of the players we have here are all wide players. Only thing really I think I can try doing is, is pulling Duke back into there and, and bringing on Gibson and trying this. Seeing whether or not we can we can get something out of it. Um, <clears throat> as I say, just it generally plays into the hands of their defensive midfielder, but... Maybe from the midfield perspective, we can overload them a little bit more now. Um, let's see if we can shout some words of encouragement. See if we can get the guys to just find a bit of magic from somewhere. To be honest, as I say, 2-2, two, two, I wouldn't be too disappointed with that. Um, as I say, <laughs> four months of not winning an away game. Uh, it's asking a lot to win here against one of the teams that I don't like. Lang with the free kick. What? I didn't know he had that in his uh, in his repertoire there. What's he got for free? Five free kick taken. In fact, why on earth is he even taking that free kick? I tell you, for five out of twenty, it's not a bad effort. But goalkeeper, a little bit suspect there. Well, um, we turn the game in its head now. And there's only five minutes on the clock. And it looks as though we may actually have snuck this. The only thing is, how are the late scores going at the moment? Are Clyde winning? They're losing. So it could be a title party here in a few minutes. And uh, the full-time whistle surely going to go here. It does. It hasn't actually said we've won the title here. Have we won it? Maybe Clyde pulled it back and scored two goals in the last few minutes. So we finally broke our little bad run of form away from home. And that is the title. We've done it. Fantastic. So one out of 35 have, have gone now. And uh, 
Shrewd Spender. Nice. Uh, board set initial budget. So it looks as though the wage budget is going to be a little bit higher. Maybe now that we know we're going to be in Lab Books League 1, can start trying to get some of the, the players I've earmarked for uh, potentially signing. Uh, whether or not they'll, they'll like the team, given the fact they're still actually in League 2, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that was a cracking win in the end. Three pretty good goals. Disappointed with the, the goals we conceded, but not too bad at all. And I think the 3-5-2 formation uh, with the wing-backs, if I can get a couple of good wing-backs, that might actually be a decent formation to, to kind of stick with. The right kind of players, and, and you might be able to get a little bit more joy out of that. But anyway, guys, uh, Season 1 is over, and uh, mission accomplished. Uh, so make sure you tune in for the next episode to see whether or not I'm still at Sterling trying to get Labrokes League 1 campaign underway or if I've actually jumped ship somewhere else to try and win one of the other 34 competitions in this British Steel Challenge. If you've liked this episode, make sure you leave a like and a comment. Until the next time guys, I'll see you when I see you.